Welcome back to season two of the 19th hole. I am your host, Eddie Wooters. Alongside me tonight, as always, Mike Dunn. Mike, how are you doing? Well, Eddie, I tell you what, it is hot in here. I'm going to have to take my shirt off. Man, I'll I tell hope you what, you're okay with that. I am always okay Woo. with you taking your shirt Woo. off. Hey, guys, welcome Woo. back. If you're viewers from All the right. trailer, welcome back. If you're new to the show, Welcome to the 19th hole. Uh, you're going to see a lot of cool information about all things disc golf, from tournament and news to, to work days, uh, volunteers. Um, the first thing we want to say is don't forget to like our YouTube channel and subscribe. Uh, and when you subscribe, Mike, I didn't know this, but you have to go into your privacy setting and put it on public so that I can see that you subscribe to the show. Okay, that way you're entered into all these cool drawings because yeah. you guys know how we get down. We're going to be giving away all kinds of prizes, goodies, all kinds of fun stuff this year. So make sure you like us, make sure you subscribe to the channel, make sure you do all the stuff that the young kids know how to do that us old guys don't know how to do, right Eddie? Absolutely. You know, we're going to cover a lot of stuff and want to get right into it. We've got some new partnerships going on with new people, all kinds of new stuff's happening. And obviously you can uh, see the new layout. New YouTube. Trying to take it up to a new notch this, this awesome. year. Let's see. Uh, we got new new staff behind the camera and stuff so uh, you know we you guys remember from last season we got on your green on the green the long drive uh, different segments so we'll talk about stake your claim which is coming up in Sterling uh, we're going to talk about the long drive uh, the, the Las Vegas challenge of course Memorial just happened we're going to talk about all these things in, in Waco big germ yeah so we're going to talk about all the recent tournaments absolutely on the green right um, Mike is really excited about this new part of our show. Um, we can put on video clips of anything you want. I found this baby picture yeah. right here of Mike, actually. And Get that thing off of No, there. it's serious. You it's know what? Not. How about this picture I found of Eddie? <laughs> now that's what I'm talking about. Here we go. Season two, we haven't even gotten through the intro and you did something like that, Mike. All right, anyway, look, it. I did, I did. So look, guys, here's the cool thing. We got a website. What is it? Or our email website. We'll have a website soon. You got a website. Yeah, flygreendiscgolf.com. That's right, flygreendiscgolf.com. That's right. Every day we're putting on more discs. Soon you'll have over 10,000 to choose from. You know we got 25,000 discs in the shop already. So It's amazing. I don't even know how we make it through the day. We do not sleep. Uh, it's awesome. You guys want to get a hold of us, you want to send us some videos, some cool shots that you and your buddies made out on the course, or maybe something you saw, you videoed, or whatever it yeah. is, send it to us at our new email, the 19th hole with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. And that's spelled out completely, the 19th hole with Eddie and Mike at well, gmail.com. Yeah, well, you got the, the number one nine. So yep. it's the one nine. <laughs> Yes, I'm sorry. Poll with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. Right, Don't forget keep... to subscribe to our channel, though. That's important. You guys have to do that in order to win prizes now on the show. Well, we don't do the live stuff anymore, so now it's through subscriptions to our YouTube channel, guys. So make sure you give us a like, subscription, and share. Anyway, let's keep uh, going. The cool new videos. I think that's going to be awesome. Um, and my favorite segment of the show was the products with Mike, the uh, shot with Mike. So we got some cool stuff that we're unveiling there. Um, we got a couple exciting guests today, right? We got uh, John Roundhouse, uh, let's go from uh, Wisconsin, uh, owner of iPhone I'm Classic. excited to hear what this all this stuff about Ethiopia and That's throwing right. discs and another uh, on another continent, and that wow. is pretty cool to grow in the sport. We always love growing the sport. That is growing the sport. We just talking to new cool videos. I don't know how you guys are going to top this. Maybe that's the first personal challenge right now. That is the challenge. I want you guys to top a video that Mike and I have of John throwing a putter into an active volcano on another, in another country. That's pretty cool. That's going to be hard to top. But I'll tell you what. Somebody send us some videos. We're going to pick... If we find a better video than someone throwing a, a no we mega, want videos. Send in videos. Yeah, we'll send you something. We don't yeah. know what it is. Probably yeah. Mike's hat because he likes that. Yeah. We'll we'll, we will send anybody that we use your video. We we'll also got uh, what's that one guy's name that runs that, uh, that little itty bitty tournament that everybody makes a big deal out of. Uh, I can never remember. Uh, his I think name. Doug, Doug something. Doug, yeah, from the. Uh, beer, beer, but anyway, beer. tune in. Doug I, beer. It has beer in it. Yeah, beer. Beer. Doug, Doug beer. beer. Tune in. Make sure you tune in because we've got him on the on the horn later on this is a really yeah. awesome uh, uh, guest to have on the show what an honor to have yeah him. no Doug Bierkus we have Doug Bierkus on um, 
probably the number one top rated tournament director uh, for disc golf in the United States. I think he is the best tournament director. Yeah, definitely. All right, we're going to do a quick shout out to some people that have come on board the 19th hole. Uh, they obviously, first off, honestly, from the bottom of my heart, I want to thank everybody that does tune in, that does watch our show. Mike and I do this for fun, but at the same time, we're pretty serious about it. And with that being said, we've had some people that actually believe in our vision and what we're trying to do here. Uh, we still this season have uh, the writer of the show, uh, Scott Serio, uh, still writing the show. Thank you, Scott, for uh, continuing to believe in this. Um, new addition this year we've got, you guys can't see them because we got some really good equipment now. Uh, we got some lights and some cameras, and we got a new camera guy, Brad Warren from uh, Warpath Productions, uh, Warren Photography out of Colorado Springs. Thank you, Brad, for coming aboard. Uh, yeah. We all know that, you know, this is a sacrifice. We're all sacrificing yeah. this, you know what I mean? Uh, I told Mike for season two, I said, Mike, I'm going to start a YouTube channel because all the young kids are starting YouTubes. And now they have Lambos and, and Hellcats and new trucks. And I'm like, Mike, I want a Hellcat. Yeah, and I didn't get my Lambo yet. Eddie. So so we're going to work hard for you guys to make sure that we do some really good shows. So I'm getting really sentimental. Also, huge, huge thank you, huge thank you to Gatekeeper Media out of Philadelphia. Yes. Big props. Wow. Major props. Okay, so here's what happened with them. I'm going to tell you real quick. Yeah. They, they watched a couple of our old videos that we did live on Facebook with our iPads and stuff. You know, all chintzy like we did. They loved it. Chintzy. Yeah, I know. Oh. It was big time, really, for us, yeah. you know. I mean, come they on. loved it. And they said, look, we, we see what you guys are doing. We see where you're going with this. We could offer some help. So, um, Gatekeeper Media. Thank you guys, yeah, man. It's, we really uh, appreciate it. Uh, Derek Skoll. I mean, how uh, else How else can you do this? Check this video out. Bam! <laughs> that's, that's right. That's awesome. That's cool. We huh? couldn't do that before. We could never do that before. That's, that's it's sweet. Right. Uh, from Gatekeeper Media, it's Derek Skoll and uh, Chris German. You guys want to get a hold of them. They got like 20 years experience between them. They're busting yeah. out. They really, they're, they want, what, are they, what they want to focus on is growing the sport of disc golf. Yep. Um, that's why they're getting involved with us. We're bringing them to states this year. Yep. I, I hear maybe Ben Ray's bringing them to the Bloom. I'm not sure what's going on there, but it's awesome. They're going to be in Colorado a lot. Yep. And they're yeah, if you got a tournament uh, and you want to have top-notch coverage, um, you can bring these guys on, and they do some of the best production in the country. Yeah, um, and you be they able do. To, you want to see some of their production? Yeah. Let's Watch take a look the show. At this clip. That was a great video, uh, and look forward to seeing more stuff from these guys. It's just going to be all year long, man. These guys are going to be in your face with Class a lot of action. action. Class action. Um, let's jump right to On the Green. Uh, you guys remember the On the Green? That's our local events that have taken place, and there was some local action that took place uh, recently down in Pueblo. Mike, did you see the layout for that course? Sick. Dude, Steel City action. I just want to say that Pueblo is one of my favorite courses, and it's hard to make it better. Uh, I did the Sean Dawson Memorial down there, did a did an alternative layout. Christian Ariolano and Mike Hill from the Steel City Shooters went ballistic on that place and made one heck of a layout. It was fun. I got to play it. Thank you very much, guys. It was an honor playing that thing. And Joe Revere, it doesn't matter what you do to the layout, Joe Revere just goes in and slays. You Knock know what I mean? Out of the park. He does. And Missy Gannon uh, playing in the Women's Open. She took first. Uh, rated 885, I believe, is her rating. And she shot an 897 and a 912. So her rating's going this way. Unreal. That's the right direction. Yep. Uh, Unreal. That's Unreal. awesome, dude. Hey, quick shout out to Brittany Twist and Frizen. Uh, Brittany had an event on March 17th, uh, St. Patty's Day at Adams Hollow in Brighton, Colorado. 63 players showed up, including wow. 16 women. Yeah. Unreal. What an incredible event. I'm surprised this our was, camera guy's here. He was yes, there. Yes, that's yeah, right. Boy. This is like a fundraiser event, one of four leading up to the Frizen event. They've done such a good job, you know. Uh, I tell you what, this is a non 
unsanctioned event where people are just having incredible fun. Really, the true grassroots of disc golf. Eddie. Absolute fun. Absolute fun. I went last year and it was incredible, Mike. I suggest nobody miss this event. There's live music. There's camaraderie. There's singing and dancing. Isn't there's there like a live dance. bus that takes you there, all over the place? There's actual party bus that has party lights and all. You know, it, it's crazy, man. It, it, just think of the ultimate party and then mix in some random disc golf courses and camping and live music. And, and there's a and lot then, of effort put in here by these is. guys, too. Raymond Carr. Raymond Carr Raymond and Carr. Brittany. Now, yep. Brittany Twist put in a lot of time. Absolutely. Not, no, absolutely. She works really hard. Her and, uh, her and Raymond have built what I believe is going to be one of the biggest events each and every year. Yep. And well, one of the biggest and funnest disc golf Absolutely. events with the with the emphasis on fun. I mean, they really have said, look, disc golf, fun, adventure, you know, the whole weekend music. Yeah. So don't miss it. No, don't miss it and don't miss one of the next fundraisers. I'm not sure exactly what it is, but we will keep you informed. Yeah. Hey, Mike, did you hear that Eagle was in town over St. Patrick's Day? Uh, I did hear he was in town, yeah. actually. Yeah. In fact, I know he was in town because he was just basically shaking the town and here, just wrecking the town. 1070? That's a, that's a pretty good rated round when you're shooting a 1070 rated yeah. round. I mean, what's better than a 17 under par? I mean, what did he <laughs> miss? Did he miss one putt? Yeah, right. We had a couple added holes, but it's not to take anything away. 1070. Okay, yeah. he, he shot an absolutely lights out round. So congratulations, Eagle, oh, no. taken down first 25 place. Twenty five down. I think he finished yeah. twenty five yeah. down. Yeah, and uh, Joe was sitting behind him at eleven down. So yeah. we had a fourteen stroke yeah. difference. That, quick, uh, quick, quick kudos to my boy Tristan Lacerne. Shot a, a, a ten twenty three rated second round, yeah. seventy six six under par. It was the second hottest round of the of the tournament for the second round. So super impressed at Tr Tristan Lacerne. Great job. That's awesome. Good job, Team. Tristan. Uh, fly green and throw a Colorado player. Boom! Hello! See, that's Colorado. what happens. You throw them logos on you? Damn! Makes your car go faster. That's, that's right. what they say in NASCAR, you know that's what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Anyway. All right, so, uh, so yeah, like we said, Eagle took that down at the St. Paddy's Day meltdown. It was yeah. a, a good tournament from everything I've heard. Good run, yeah. B tier. Missy Gannon, again, you're going to hear this name a lot. Yeah, that's, took uh, it down. that's a name that's not going to be uh, going away. No. So, anyway, the third annual Stake Your Claim, April 13th of the 15th, Ster Sterling, Colorado, at the Pioneer Park. Yeah. Sponsored by Throw Colorado and Dynamic Disc, C tier. Yeah. Uh, Dwight. Uh, Venetucci. Very well done. Mike. Thank you. It's sold out. 84 players with a waiting list. Absolutely. Doubles on Friday afternoon, two rounds on Saturday, one round on Sunday. Um, this is pretty exciting. It's going to be a lot of fun. People are super looking forward to it. Um, I guess the money here is to put in T signs. Is that right? Well, so what we did, Mike, was um, we got a hold of uh, John Lutzo mm -hmm. from iFlame Plastic. We're working with him. We sold. 13 or 14 of those T-signs. These are permanent T-signs. We uh, throw Colorado help get concreted that course a couple years ago. Uh, it's a great course. If you guys haven't played Pioneer Park, I suggest taking a drive up there and playing it. Great, fun course. Uh, great, great club, the uh, local club, the Hellfire Disc Golf Club. Shout out to Gary Mustard. Uh, Gary's been uh, helping us head steam. He pretty much is the one that uh, sold all those T-signs locally. Um, and he's going to be out there with the city uh, marking where to put the new T sign poles. Um, the, the city's going out putting in new new poles, clips, concrete. The Once whole nine again, yards. volunteers going out there, doing the work, it, getting the jobs done. These guys don't get paid to do this no, stuff. No, they don't. And here's the thing: people people ask the question all the time, Mike, is how do you get these courses in, or how do you make this step? How do you do this? It, it's really simple. If you want to get T signs, or you want to get benches, or you want to upgrade your park, just Donate some time. Yep. Pick up the phone, call the city officials, tell them, look, this is what I'd like to do. What do I do? What are the steps I take? And they're going to point you in the right direction. And anyway, just that's what we're doing up here. Yep. So permanent T signs are coming in from this tournament. That's going to be awesome. That's awesome. Um, what about Cinco de Mayo? Cinco. Uh, Cinco's got a, a wait list as well. There's a few open pro, sp uh, uh, pro spots left in the pro field, so uh, it's going to be absolutely insane. I mean, people look forward to this every single year. Yeah, we have camping. We have we have everything for this event. We, we're gonna have a uh, um, we got two courses. The the pros will play the beast twice, and the ams will play 
Serenity Pines twice. So, and then they'll each play the other course once. So it's going to be a great mixture. We've got some good sponsors for this. Justin Leeser is your tournament director for this. Um, if, if you're a, a, a pro open player, I think there are some spots left, so you can definitely get in on that. And I heard that Woody and Sunshine uh, is co are, are they're coming to play the halftime show, if you will. Man, uh, either way, that's going to be a fun one to go watch, regardless. Yeah. Cinco, and then, Cinco on Cinco. And then we're talking about states at Shining Mountain, Eddie. Congratulations, first of all, for getting that. Um, and I know you've done an amazing job. You put in a lot of work already. <laughs> Let's talk about this real quick. We're gonna to have to wrap this up. We only have a couple minutes left in this segment, but um, I, I'm just gonna August 10th through the yeah. 12th, Shining Mountain. You got three courses, all in the same location. You got camping. You got food. You got entertainment. You got vending. You got also the half size hawk put on by Fly Green Disc Golf yeah. with the half size disc on its own 18 hole course. So really, you got four courses set up there. I mean, this is going to be absolutely incredible. It's going to be it's awesome. probably one of the best states tournaments ever put on. You brought in tur uh, tournament uh, directors from all over to help you do this. Yep. I, um, I wanted to get a little bit of surprise galore's coming in, and it's just yeah. going to be absolutely spectacular. We're going to be talking about this probably yeah. week after week after week as we go along the We're show. We're going to bring Mike Stores. Mike yeah. Stores is one of my TDs, so he's going to come on, and we'll get uh, we'll get some information. Yeah, out. and it's going to—I mean, it's just going to be insane. It's going to be super duper exciting, people. If if I'm not sure, has has this opened up yet? Can you, can you register yet? No, first? no, you can't. You can't. One thing I will tell you right now about states is that. Fly Green Disc Golf is going to be handling uh, the payouts for AMS. They're going to be vending. They're running a juniors, a junior basket, junior disc event. It's going to be awesome. Uh, speaking of Fly Green, I want you guys to check out this awesome new commercial that they sent us. Welcome back. Let's jump right into the long drive because we've got a really, really awesome guest tonight, Mike. This is going to be great. We're going to talk about one of the biggest tournaments, if not the biggest tournament to take place. You guys already know what we're talking about, and that's the GBO in Emporia, Kansas. This is huge, right? It's going to be awesome. We have Doug Bierkus on the line. Doug, how are you? Good, man. It's good to be on the phone with you guys. Always what? love talking to my peeps from Colorado. Oh, man. yeah. What an absolute honor to have you on the show tonight. Thank you very much for taking time out. Tell the family we said hello, but let's jump right into it because this is huge, Doug. This is huge. How many players are you expecting this year? Somewhere around 1,650. Unbelievable, Doug. I mean, so it just seems like... That, that number seems unreal. Every year it seems to get bigger, bigger, bigger. How many courses are you guys playing on to, to manage that many players? So for the for the big event, the uh, A tier and the NT will be on nine different courses. Oh, wow. Um, yep, throw on top of that about three or four others that will run flex C tiers on throughout the week, and uh, it's going to be a whole lot of disc golf. Well, a whole you, lot of fun. If you got nine so, courses, Doug, I'm just curious, how many TDs do you have this year working? We got 18. We've got a course <laughs> TD, an assistant course TD on That's each of the amazing. courses. Uh, they're seasoned uh, folks that have, have done this for a while, and uh, boy, we have a great staff. In fact, new to the to the course TDs is uh, uh, Steve and Jesse Claypoff from uh, yep. Eagle, Colorado. They'll be running Colorado, shout really out. Excited. Awesome job. That is awesome. Yep. So we know that it does take a huge staff. I know that. I've run some events, not anything even near the size of GBO, and, and I know how important the staff is. But just as important as the staff, Doug, how many volunteers do you th Just give me a guess. How many volunteers yep. do you have? Oh, I think about 150. See, that's what I'm talking about. Yep. 150 volunteers. Yeah. I mean, if you don't have volunteers, you can't even put a man on no like that, way. could you, Doug? No, no way. No, it, it, the, the volunteers are the lifeblood of the event. Don't, so, don't be fooled. So, I mean, it, it, that, those are the, that's the real glue. We got 16, over 1,600 players. We have 18 tournament directors, uh, 100 and some volunteers. Where are we going to put all these people, Doug? What, what, what is your plan? 
Well, I tell you what. Uh, I, I, much. I got an <laughs> RV. I mean, I am going to bring out my RV, Doug. So a couple of those guys can probably stay with me in the RV. So, yeah, you, if, if, you, if you make that public once this thing airs, and I can't wait to see it, you're going to yeah. have some people knocking on your door because I mean, hotels are all booked. We've got campgrounds filled. We've got uh, a local Boy Scout camp has opened up all of their cabins. Uh, the community, uh, tons of uh, folks are opening up their homes uh, through Airbnb. Wow. Um, it, it's just been uh, a group effort, and, and we, we are pretty much at the max right now, unless some other hotels open up. I don't see us getting over 1600, 1650 in the future. Um, so I, I think, I think as far as housing competitors go, we're, we're pretty much at our max. Wow. Well, I, I could talk to you about GBO all night, and this question is not even on the script, but leading into several questions, what do you plan on doing next year? Because obviously this tournament keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, you know, it's like Woodstock. What are you going to end up doing? when you have too many people. I mean, are you already thinking ahead for next year on housing and, and that kind of thing? We, we are, and, uh, you know, as, as a tournament grows, there's there's really two ways you can grow a tournament. One is quantity and one is quality. And uh, uh, last year we focused on quality. Um, this year, now don't take, don't anybody take this the wrong way. We're, we're not cutting any shortcuts as far as quality goes, but we, we went with quantity as one of our goals for growing the event this year. Um, Next year, it'll probably be back to just quality. And I got to tell you, you got to keep it fresh. You got to keep it exciting. You got to get, you know, people yeah. wanting to come back. And uh, we've been doing that year after year, and that, that's the goal every year. Well, I'll tell you what, you and, and Dynamic Disc, uh, you guys make it easy for tournament directors to, to be able to do that, give the good payouts and players packs and, and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, if anybody's looking, that's that's one way to make it happen right there. You guys always try to pay it forward, so we yeah. appreciate that. And if you've never been to the glass blown or never played in it, and it's something that you want to do, that is something you got to get in early. Yeah. And um, and it's an experience you'll never forget. So and like Doug saying, they, it does change every year. And next year will probably be a whole different experience. Are you expecting? Yeah. Are you expecting the top ten disc golfers? You know. Uh, oh. Oh, absolutely, men and women. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. With it being a, a, a national tour event for the third year in a row, um, it's it's a kind of a must stop on the circuit for the, the the top players, and we get them here every year, uh, both in the MPO and the FPO field. So we're excited to see the best in the sport compete uh, in Emporia at the end of April. What, so, Doug, yeah, what I mean is to bring these guys in. What what is the payouts this year? I mean, obviously, you guys have got to have some really amazing cash payouts for these pros. Tell me, tell me about that. Well, we do. Um, we actually will publish our payout probably around April sixth. In fact, we have a, a a staff meeting where we're going to go over that, and uh, we usually try to publish the payout, you know, two or three weeks before the event. And uh, we are fully expecting to exceed what we did last year. Uh, last year, if my memory serves me correctly, you can probably go on to PDGA and look it up. But um, I believe first place in the MPO uh, paid five grand last year. So uh, that that's a pretty good person. Yes, and on down is. through the different places, uh, we we tend to make sure that's that the pros not only have a great experience on the course, but those that play well and compete and find themselves at the top of the field uh, get to put a little money in their pocket. That's awesome. Man. That is absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Doug. We know how hard you've worked, man, and it's it's just amazing to see this thing grow. So, um, we got a couple goofy questions. Yeah, I mean, now. let's hit you up with a little personal questions. I know so many people know who you are now. Uh, you know, I'd say just five years ago, only uh, you know, or you were maybe more of a Colorado name five six years ago. Right. Now I think you're more of a national name as far as disc golf goes. I think a lot of people uh, across the nation know who Doug Bierkus is. So, you know, we're going to ask you five personal questions about yourself. You know, I'm sure you've done the in the bag, but let's ask Doug a couple of questions. All right. This is this one is from me, Doug, personally. I want to know, what is it? What's your go-to meal the night before you know that things are about to kick off for you at GBO? What are you, what are you going to sit down and have with uh, uh, Naomi? Well, Naomi is uh, about a 1050 rated cook, and so uh, anything she makes is just uh, dynamite. But uh, she she does really good with uh, 
authentic Mexican food and anything she makes uh, Mexican, I'm going to dive right in and probably eat too much of it. Okay. All right. I like it. Okay. 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 Maybe, maybe, maybe when she comes out for states, if you guys get out here for states, we can uh, have a pre-states dinner with you guys. That'd be awesome. I like it. I like uh, it. She, she's right. awesome. Hit him, Mike. Okay. All right. So we know what's in your bag, but what is actually your absolute favorite disc of all time? My favorite disc of all time has to be the classic Super Soft judge if i had to go out and just have one disc some people might find that a little strange but i could throw that disc forever love that thing nice good answer all right all right what um what is your pre-event warm-up you got a ritual you got something you do something superstitious anything you do right before gbo well now are you talking about as a player or as a tournament director tournament director Okay, because as a player, that's a whole other experience. And there, I'm, 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 I'm not quite what I probably am as a tournament director. But uh, that's next episode. So, yeah. So, you know, the key for me is, you know, uh, I, I am I am making sure that we're all communicating. And when you have this many people moving and this many moving parts, one thing I've had to learn over the years is that I've got to let go of some of it and just delegate it, communicate clearly, and make sure that everyone knows what they're doing and is in the right place. And uh, uh, again, I'm sure you guys have been to tournaments where it looks like no one knows what they're doing, and uh, uh, that to me is something that I will always prepare for ahead of time, just to make sure that all the T's are crossed and the I's are dotted, so that uh, everyone's on the same page. That is absolutely great delegation advice. is definitely one of your yep. uh, your masterful traits. Uh, you do a great job with that, and make sure everybody knows what they're doing too. Okay, final final question, and we'll let you go, Doug. We appreciate you so much for taking your time out tonight. Boxers or briefs? <laughs> well, uh, if, if I could, neither. But usually that's not the case. Um, you heard uh, it right here uh, on the 19th. Yes, you did hear you that right, right here tonight. <laughs> I, I will tell you that uh, uh, a couple guys that I work with at Dynamic Discs have turned me on to a product called MeUndies. And if uh, you're not familiar with MeUndies, you need to check them out. They are... Uh, they are like walking around on a cloud. That is, that's amazing. Okay, so I was going to ask you if there was any bit of information you could drop about GBO this year that hasn't been announced anywhere just so we could have some, some secret information. But now I'm going to switch that to, can you tell us who wears B-Undies at Dynamic Disc? Um, I, I can. I can tell you that the team manager for Dynamic Discs, Mr. Robert McCall, is a big MeUndies guy, and uh, I, I can thank him for turning me on to uh, the comfort that those things bring. Man, maybe... We're going to have to try them, Maybe right? we need to contact them for uh, get a sponsor spot here on the yes. show and send us some pairs. Modeling opportunities. Hey, hey, I, I, I do have some news that just broke yesterday. I'm not sure if you guys are aware of this, and I hate to shift gears on you, but uh, Love it. as you know, we're also hosting the uh, 2018 Junior World Disc Golf Championships in Emporia yes. uh, this summer, and uh, we have just... Uh, cut a huge deal with Zuka Carts um, as a major sponsor of the event. And if there are any juniors out there listening, you're going to want to make sure that uh, you're prepared to be bringing something big home with you from Junior Worlds. Wow. wow. Awesome, Doug. Thank you so much. Wow. That's amazing news. That is awesome. Thank you, Zuka, for uh, stepping up. That's, that's amazing. That is amazing. It, awesome. it sure is. Doug, it's always Mike. a pleasure to talk to you, sir. Yeah, good luck with your show, and uh, loved watching it last year. Called in a couple times, had a blast listening to it. Loved keeping up with Colorado Disc Golf, as many folks probably know. That's where a lot of my, my roots are as a tournament director. Um, man, sometimes it seems like just yesterday, um, back in 2011, I was knocking on Mike's door there at Fly Green to see if he would help support the very first Rocky Mountain Women's Disc Golf Championships. And uh, it's amazing seven years later that... Uh, that experience has brought me to where I am, and uh, if it weren't for all of the amazing people in Colorado, I certainly wouldn't be where I am today. So, well, thanks to all the folks you. that, thanks to all the folks that watch your show. You guys keep it up, keep growing the sport. It is the, it is the best sport in the world, and you guys are doing great things for it. Thanks so much. We're proud of you, Doug. We really are. We love you, buddy. Colorado misses you. Have a good night, Doug. Hey, you guys do the same. We'll talk to you soon. Take care, Doug Bierkus, Everybody, that was amazing. Um, wow.
Uh, is it just me or was Doug getting a little choked up at the end? There? I don't know, man. That guy, I, we love that guy. I'll tell you what. That, that guy had taught me a lot right on the beginning. He taught me wow. a lot about uh, my, my disc golf business, uh, about disc golf, and just about, you know, just being a great guy. It's amazing. It's always an honor to have him on. Anyway, um, let's keep moving. Let's do let's it. Let's keep moving. So, you heard about Vibram. Man, I tell you what, I, I almost didn't even believe it. You know, they've been in the business since 2008. Uh, Ten years, right? Uh, okay. they, they got the Vibram Open, which, you know, used to be the um, Maple Hill in Massachusetts. Correct. Um, it, it's just crazy, you know, it's a huge company. And they, they just decide out of nowhere that, well, we just, we don't, we don't have our heart all the way into it, so... So, We're not going to make this anymore. So be honest, Mike. As a store owner, them going out of business, what, what percentage? What, what kind of damage? You know does that what? Do I, I just there are people that like to play with those discs. So uh, yeah. to me, the questions that are being asked are: What are those? What are what are going to happen to those molds? Can somebody buy them? Can somebody else reproduce that? It's a different technology. It's not plastic injection molding. They have a different process. I don't really know. I would love to see somebody else take those molds, reutilize them, and repurpose them and remake the disc. But is it going to happen? I don't know. Well, uh, but I know that uh, they're done making them. Vibram's not going to make anymore. So you still have some in stock. We do have some in stock. So and and what's their down. supply look like, Mike? Like if you run out, is there? They're done. done. Absolutely it's done. done. Okay. I tried to play, well, place a big order in. So you're saying get down here now. Get down here. <laughs> I do have lots of mini markers, but I, I, we have a couple hundred discs. Cool. So you well, can, you, you know, can get some. Um, but now it's funny, the Vibram Open. Yeah, what is it now? Now it's um, MVP has bought the rights this year. So for 2018, it's now the MVP Open at Maple Hill. So could this be like the Madden curse where if you make, if you get that tournament, you get injured 10 years later? <laughs> like if you make the cover of Madden, you get right. injured that year? Right. It'd be interesting to see who's next, Prodigy. I don't know, oh, boy. I, I hope didn't not. say that. I, didn't I hope say it. not. I All right, so um, not. Vegas Challenge. You know what? I mean, sponsored by Anova. Heard it was a good time. Can't yeah. call it the Gentleman's Club. It's the Las Vegas Challenge. Well, I mean, right. they've they've tried to clean it up, step it up to a new level. Before it was more like the hey, you know what? Let's. We gotta head out in that direction anyway. Well, let's stop in Vegas before we, you know, we head to the memorial. Right. It just made sense, you know. Well, it worked out for our local boy Eagle. You know what? It's good to see him get a win. I, I'll be honest, man. It's really good to see him get a win, get that confidence. Uh, he's been close. That was exciting to watch. It sure was, man. It I sure mean, was. And you know, when you've got. Joel Freeman right there on your heels too, you know, your, your hometown, one of your hometown boys, home state. You get comfortable, I think, it, right? Well, you get bragging rights too, let's face well, it, there's yeah. some bragging I'm rights. I'm pretty sure you got the number one tag after that. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, that's some good old-fashioned Colorado action right there, so. Paige Pierce, she just kind of continues dominating wherever she goes. Yep, but we were still talking about how much Colorado was dominating there, but. All right, anyway. From the m memorial, as always, on top, you're seeing Mr. Lazat and Eagle McMahon again. Those right. guys, we're starting to see them on top again at the top of all these tournaments. Um, Dismania, holy cow. And what happens when those guys start winning tournaments? We start selling those discs, Eddie. Of course you do. You know what? That section has just exploded in the store. Yep, absolutely. So. And Paige, of course, yep. continues to dominate. One, Paige first and the ladies. Sorry about that, ladies. Didn't mean to neglect you. Paige Pierce, number one, as as usual, she won. It wasn't neglect. It's just so repetitive saying Paige yeah, Pierce won, Paige, Paige Pierce won. Uh, what going, about the Waco Open? What there. happened over there? Intense. Jeremy Colling comes out again, back to back. Same way he won last year. Playoff. That's right. Guy throws OB. That's right. Jeremy takes it. Yep. Back to back wins in Waco. Crazy. It's awesome. It's good to see that, man. Uh, and that was Nate Nate Perkins that he was playing in right. that playoff. Man. And then, Nate just went and then uh, who won in the ladies again? I don't know. You tell me. Paige Pierce. Pierce. Paige yeah. Pierce. Uh -huh. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly.
up guys? It's Ian Ray with DGOE. If you like what you saw in the video, give us a like on our Facebook page, DGOE Apparel. Uh, if you need to put an order in, hit us up on Gmail, DGOE Apparel at gmail.com. That was an awesome little clip from DGOE. If you guys are looking for some apparel, make sure you hit up Ian Ray at Disc Golf Over Everything, man. That was cool. Now, on to my personal favorite segment of the show, the Upshot with Mike. Mike, what's going on in your show today? Well, I tell you what, this year we're going to do something completely different because we want some action. We do. We, we want to see want, your action. We want to see videos, clips, bloopers. I mean, go out there and make the shot. Take the shot. Were you at a tournament in your backyard? Yeah. Were you in a field? Whatever. Were you at a tags match? Bring your cameras wherever you got it. We want to see your clips. We want to share your clips with the world. Yeah. And, and, and that's the idea. So send us whatever it is. Where do they send it to, Eddie? They send it to our new email, which is the 19th hole with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. That's right. the 19th hole, numbers 1 9 with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. Right, so send us your videos, and if we choose to use them, we're going to send you something cool. Yeah. I'm not sure what it is yet, but it will be cool. Yeah. Let's take a couple of looks. Uh, our clips of the week. We, we got Missy Gannon here from Colorado. Yeah. Let's take a look at some of these long Yeah, let's take, the let's shoe take a, a look at a pack of butts. I mean, putts. Uh, gosh darn it. <laughs> this is what happens. Anyway, we're going to take a look at a few of her putts. Let's talk about uh, half size hooks. Uh, this is an event taking place at States. Uh, Mike Dunn, uh, my co host here, uh, is going to be running this event with John Letso from Wisconsin. John's coming out. He's going to do some of the drone footage and, and help with the TD and part of everything. Uh, also, Scott Serio is going to help Mike with the course layout. Scott's really knowledgeable about about that area up there, man. So I feel like you're going to run a really super pump, super pump. This will be a really our first ever tournament that I've ever put on and I'm super excited about it and this is actually junior size discs which is the half size discs they're yeah. not minis they're not so full size discs um, they're cool can, people can throw them upwards of 400 feet and sometimes over um, we're gonna have junior uh, divisions for kids uh, anywhere yeah. from four or five years old up to 12 years old yeah. and then adults from 13 on up yeah. and we will have a uh, uh, open division right. with prize prizes, uh, cash prizes, five to seven hundred fifty dollars. We're not sure yet for first prize, so it's going to be some good payouts. What I like most about what you did here, Mike, was you set it up so that the kids actually play while mom and dad are playing states. Right? You got it. So, so Saturday, mom and dad, you guys are playing states out at Shining Mountain. You're wondering what am I going to do with the kiddos? They have their own tournament. This guy fixed the problem for you. That's He's right. going to be your babysitter. Oh wait. We probably shouldn't try to advertise it like yeah. that, right? Well, not exactly like that, but um, right. The kids can come out yeah. and the adults come yeah. out, play the tournament anytime from Friday through Sunday, and play the uh, the half size huck. Yeah. Um, the tournament is anywhere from free to twenty five dollars to play, depending upon what age category you're going right, to be in. Right. You're going to get the uh, half size discs. Uh, and then you come out and get a prize package and all kinds of other fun stuff. The value will be obviously well worth more than the prize. And, and, and so you'll come out with more details. But you uh, we're going to keep talking about it. You're going to play at the 34 and a half size inch baskets yeah. on a very unique and you're course. You're going to give sponsorship opportunities yes. to people to be able to get one of these baskets. We will be looking logo. for 20 different sponsors. That's, people have awesome, individual man. or corporate business, any that's, type of sponsor awesome. you want to get the baskets at a, a very a below cost price for the basket with your name on custom it. made for you that's um, cool. and we yep, we'll talk more about that that's awesome man we're looking forward to that Mike I am I'm also looking forward to the the disc of the the week I, I want to hear about this wrap oh well let's talk about let's it. hear about the wrap. let's talk about it so Anova just came out with the brand new rat feels um, great mid-range um, yeah, check it out I'm gonna hand it to you so here. it is a mid-range it is uh, you know uh, they've been talking about a sidearm specific mid-range disc uh, overstable um, 
And so they brought it out. And there it is. It's a 4203. Um, and it's been well received. The market likes it. Um, it's been, uh, you know, considered to be uh, very similar to a harp, uh, a zone, a suspect. Um, and uh, I was very suspect when I picked it up. Yeah. <laughs> so we, what we did was we grabbed um, all three of those discs in the store here, and we were kind of comparing them to see what what similarities we felt, and they all have very similar uh, side edges. Yeah. Um, the, the tops are all very flat on all the discs. Obviously a flat disc is going to make it more stable. They feel really good in your yeah. hands. Um, I did feel like, um, you know, some of these discs, like the Suspect that does have a small micro bead on it, um, and the Harp, which also has the small micro bead on it, uh, they're actually a little smoother than the rat is it that it has a little bit of a sharper oh, edge I, like on when it, I which it for up. a side arm yep. you know sometimes you know, you know can give you a little bit a little of a rash a little rash on the so, finger but um, i feel like it's going to beat in when i picked this disc up mike the first thing i said well i heard that it was a lot like a mortar that's what i've been hearing um so i made that assumption before actually coming to pick one up at the store now that i'm here and i'm picking one up i feel like it it is mortar-ish but it's, it's a cross between the AVR uh, 3 and, and a mortar. Uh, it feels great. I, I probably will end up putting one in the bag just to see how it throws because it feels like you can really depend on this disc. Yeah, you know, and then, of course, uh, doing a little bit of research online, you know, I'd read some reviews and, uh, you know, I was talking about being about an 80% uh, straight flight with a very predictable fade at the end. And then I talked to a couple of guys in the shop and they tell me that, well, they're throwing it and it's more like a putter than it is a mid-range, and they can throw it deadly flat and have it almost sit down with very little fade, wow. and, and not yeah. as much a predictable fade. So I think it's talking about arm speed once again, but um, so to me, I'm comparing it more to, a, say, a zone than anything else. There you go. Super duper flat, very predictable, great for a headwind, probably not a super big headwind, but maybe up to about 15 miles an hour. Um, but like you said, this is probably going to find its way into the bag of many disc golfers. Probably yeah. worthwhile picking one up, giving it a shot. Right now, it's only available in the S plastic. I'm sure they're going to bring it out in other plastics. Wow. Come down and check it out. We've got a huge selection right now. I have them in the S, and I also have them in the first run plastics. And don't forget, and if you, you're a tag holder, you can get 10% off. And you can also check us out at uh, flygreendiscgolf.com. That's awesome, man. And we have them available it's a on cool there, disc. too. I like it but, a lot. But, yeah, and it just feels so good in your hand. Hey, real quick, before we leave the uh, the upshot with Mike, don't forget, guys, send, a, send in your videos the 19th hole with it. Eddie and Mike at yeah, how, Gmail. Yeah. Uh, we're we're going to start, oh, the VIP program that uh, you were talking about. Do we want to mention that now? Well, yeah. I mean, obviously, one of the new pro programs at Perks Down Flight and Disc Golf now, we have the new VIP program. So when you come down, you just type in your phone number, what? and bam, uh, we'll start tracking your points for you. So we used to have a punch card, but everyone would lose their punch cards. And then, you know, you'd lose all your right. re rewards. Now we keep track of them for you, so you don't need anything. It just stacks up rewards, sends you the coupons. Now we'll send you a nice coupon on your birthday. Um, just little reminders here and there, special rewards and coupons when we're having a sale, and you know, just kind of staying up with the 21st century. So, you know, Mike, I actually used my rewards and my discount and came down today and picked up this awesome Scorpius by Millennium. This thing is going to be sweet. This is a first run, right, Mike? I know. You know what, it's, Eddie? Every time you come down here, you always seem to find some super duper deal on a Millennium that you're like, hey. Mike, how do you, these are like these should be worth thirty dollars, and you got them in here for fifteen ninety nine. So look, here's the thing: Millennium makes the best of everything, and I'll prove it. Check out this commercial that Millennium sent us for the ship. Check it out. That's one small step for man. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best. You know, Mike, a lot of players are on the field and they hear the cling, 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 cling of them bag tags. And uh, most people know what they are, but there are still a few people that don't know what bag tags here in Colorado are. Uh, basically, it's a way to play semi-competitively, 
through the week, right? Yeah, it's uh, almost like a league, Eddie. Right, and you kind of track your performance because you get the, the tags are numbered one through however many of the club sells. Generally, you know, a couple hundred here in Colorado, mile highs up, you know, over 500. So uh, you just try to work your way to the lowest number, you know, number one. Uh, and, and be that guy. Oh, I thought it was to the highest number. That's well, that's what we play because. <laughs> right. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, what number do you? I got four twenty right now. What do you got? I got um, three hundred and seventy-two. I got you. Big. It's awesome. If you guys aren't tag holders right now, you should definitely look into your local club. Yeah. Uh, and I guarantee wherever you're at, I bet they've got a tag club somewhere. Yeah, but, great way uh, to meet new people. Great way to get out, absolutely. play disc golf, play other courses, and, and just go out and have a great time. Most of these clubs that are doing this, uh, not most, I would say all the clubs that actually sell tags, they, they use all that money for uh, uh, tournaments in the area, course restoration, uh, maintenance, and, and that kind of thing. So by buying a tag each year, you're supporting the club. So I encourage buying a tag from every club. You know, here in Colorado alone, I'm going to try, but I'm going to miss a bunch. We've got Hellfire, Mile High, Pikes Peak, Foothill Flyers, Throw Fly Colorado, Green. Fly Green, uh, Dragon Rivers. Tags. Yeah, okay, so you get the uh, point. There's tags everywhere. Yeah. So it, it's fun. And, and you people. can join as many as you want. So, um, if you'd like to get your your uh, tag schedule on the show, we yeah. would love to put that on because we got some fancy new equipment, got yeah. a green screen. We can just put it right up there. It'd be sweet. Uh, so send that to us to our new email at the the nineteenth hole. Sorry, the nineteenth hole with the numbers one nine. The nineteenth hole with Eddie and Mike at gmail dot com. All right, send us your schedules and we get those on the show for you so you guys can uh, know, be educated on where to play tags during the week. Yeah. Uh, some of the some of the current tags being held right now, you know, time change just took place, Mike. So throw Colorado, we run tags every Saturday yep, at Shiny yep. Mountain. We just changed that to two PM. Uh, and the majority of the time we'll be playing Serenity Pines, but throughout the year as weather gets better we'll switch that up to you know, either the beast or the new course. Oh. Anyway, let's uh, move forward. Uh, fly Green Tags, when's that yeah. coming so out? So Fly Green, we're playing right now. Every uh, Wednesday we play at Village Greens, uh, 5 o'clock, check in at 4.30. That'll get expanded as the, yeah. um, as the you know, days get longer. And then Friday we play at Lighthouse, John uh, David Lorenz Memorial South. Yeah. Uh, we Same thing, 5 o'clock, kickoff, 4.30, check in. Um, Mike Bonner's running that on Friday. Um, and then we got the Pikes Peak Tags, looks like Tuesday, uh, the AV area, 4.30 p.m., <laughs> Uh, Saturday at 10 a.m. Wide Field, Sunday 10 a.m. in the Aviary, and then Sunday 2 p.m. at Rampart. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna have to, we'll, we'll try to get the tag schedules out for everybody a little bit more each Absolutely. week. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't mean to leave anyone out. We're just kind of getting each, uh, a few clubs each episode. So um, let's do uh, the work days at Serenity Pines. Those are coming up soon. We don't have a date on those yet, Mike, but we do, we are gonna do a, a couple work days before uh, Cinco kicks off. Uh, up there, which we'll talk about Cinco here in a little yeah, bit. We'll probably have more information next week on that. Yeah, we will. And sure. talking about that, it was kind of lead in more to about, you know, if you have information as well and you want help on your course, you want information, you Absolutely. want us to feed this out to the public so that people will help show up to your events, let us know. Uh, you know, I've said this more than once, Mike, volunteering. Yep. People are always saying, how do we volunteer? How do we get involved? How do we make a difference? Um, they're always looking for that special work day. Now that we're talking about Serenity Pines. Uh, volunteering isn't something you write on the schedule, something you put on the calendar. Hey, Mike, do you want to go volunteer with me on uh, March? That's not how it works. Volunteering is when you're on the course every single day and you see a piece of trash, you stop for five seconds and pick it up. I've said it before. If you put five seconds into picking up one piece of trash, multiply that into an hour over the entire week, and you can really make a difference on your local courses. So I, I really support volunteering. Yeah, I'm, that, that's what we're talking about, whether it's picking up the trash, helping somebody line up, you know, whatever the new baskets, is. whatever you're doing. Yeah, I mean, whatever just, it is. Just take part. Make a difference on it. your course, and that is volunteering. Uh, speaking of volunteering, uh, this guy right here has volunteered a lot of time. He went across the country, ran a couple tournaments uh, locally, and then went to Ethiopia. I mean, this guy's all over the place. Check out this commercial from John Letso and Ifling Plastic.
Welcome to iFling Plastic. I'm Johnny Roundhouse. Here at iFling Plastic, we'd love to help you with your disc golf needs. We offer a variety of company choices and plastics. We carry our own line of custom designed apparel and can help design your own apparel. Let us help you with your personal, club, tournament, or business needs with our custom designed banners, stickers, apparel, and more. Check out our site at iflingplastic.com or go to our Facebook page and see many of the products we can create for you. Man, I fling plastic, you can get pretty much anything there, Mike. Go check them out, give them a like, give them a share. Uh, speaking of I fling plastic, uh, let's go right into our segment called Disc Cushion with Ooh. Into the Mind. My of, head already hurts. It eh? does. Well, you, my head hurts too, Mike. I'll tell you what. Into the Mind of who tonight, Mike? Who is it? It is John Letso out of I fling plastic from Watertown, Wisconsin. John, how are you doing? Doing pretty good. How are you guys? Awesome, dude. Yeah, we're awesome. First, Thanks for being on the show tonight. First, ah, my pleasure. First thing Glad we want to, to know, John, what's your what's your PDJ number? Uh, 16046. Yeah, that's a pretty low one. How old uh, are you? Down there. What are you, like 97 years old? <laughs> thought we were, that, thought but... we were friends, but apparently you've been lying to me. Okay, anyway. Uh, John, how did you first learn about disc golf, man? I actually played frisbee golf at an object course in camp when I was in fourth, fifth, and sixth grade. Wow. But I didn't get into disc golf itself until 95. My buddy Joe Lubeck, a friend of mine through college, taught me about disc golf. And his brother, Mark Lubeck, Moose we call him in Milwaukee, was the 98 amateur world champions. Okay, okay. So... So, so you are seventy four years old. That's what I was kind of thinking too, Mike. Okay, so, <laughs> so do you play now in a wheel? I think you got me by a few, even. Come on now. No, so Just you... because I have a lower number doesn't mean a whole lot. Okay, I'm okay. Much smarter in this sport. Doesn't I it? got it. Okay. All right, so let's let's really let's get serious with uh, John because John actually is doing some amazing stuff. Uh, for those of you that don't know, I'm just going to run this down real quick. Ifling Plastic is a, a company John owns. It's a disc golf company. He sells plastic. He makes apparel. He does trophies, bag tags, uh, banners, signs, you name it. The guy does pretty much everything. Um, and so with that being said, what I want to talk about is John just went to Ethiopia to help run a tournament. The first tournament, right, John? The first sanctioned tournament on the continent of Africa. Wow. That's awesome. Awesome job, dude. Congratulations. That's amazing, dude. That is awesome. So Thank you. I was just super blessed to be a part of it. Johannes was the real deal. He's the guy who organized most of that. I was just blessed to be able to help him and get things rolling. Yeah, it's super awesome. Um, tell us really quick. Um, we're going to ask you a bunch of questions, so I don't mean to rush, but we'll, we'll try to zip That's through as much information as we can. Tell us really quick about these baskets that were made. Ah, he made them uh, under PDGA standards, and with the skill and the knowledge that was there, they were awesome baskets. Created very close to what a disc catcher from Innova is, along those lines with the band around the top. 30 chains. Yeah, and they, they looked awesome. You guys have a video of them, actually. You guys got a video. Did you see this video, let's, Mike? Let's take a look at this video. This is the video quick. of them actually trucking in the baskets. Did you, you guys just had volunteers from the village? It looked like, or the wherever you guys were at, right? That's right. That was volunteers from the university and some of the local workers there from, I believe, the welding shop. Let's, uh, you know, what we're gonna. Why we've got you on here? We're just gonna run through some of these videos. Uh, there's a video actually of John throwing here, throwing an omega into an active volcano. <laughs> That's pretty crazy. That's awesome. I mean, bye bye oh, Omega. I kind of cried a little bit. Um, awesome job, man. It's really cool. So, where does this lead? Now, what happens, John? Well, Johannes's goal is to start the African Disc Golf Foundation and to unite the continent of Africa as they organize and start learning about disc golf. We had a gentleman from Zambia come to the tournament. <clears throat> Pardon me. We had a guy from South Africa come to the tournament. 
We also had a gentleman from, we had Tapani from Finland and Derek who owns Quarry Park in the UK, Kennelsworth, UK. But the ones from Africa, John Pat from South Africa and Elam from Zambia are now taking their knowledge and their skills back home and working on building disc golf in their communities and plans are underway to have an African disc golf tour. John, so our viewers can... Year, there will be two stops on that tour for sure. We know this already. Zambia and Ethiopia. That that's a, Dude, that's, that's really awesome work, man. You guys are moving forward, and I'm sorry, but our viewers can see that Mike and I are smiling right now, and it's because we've got a little... Uh, this little joke that we had before we uh, got, got to shooting tonight, and uh, Mike looked at me and he said, Man, Eddie, I'm, I'm sure glad I'm not the TD and trying to pronounce the names on that players list. And uh, <laughs> I, I, I got to say, just from talking to you right now, man, it seems it seems like I even would have flunked on that. And I usually do a pretty good job of that. But well, I mean, uh, can you can you give us the most unusual name uh, that you recall on that, like on that tournament list? No, I can't. You know, there were some different ones. I'd have to look at the list itself to even try to pronounce. No, and but they're written in the English version of it. So we poke, we, we poke fun, man. But in all seriousness, dude, it's pretty awesome that you had people coming from all over, from different continents. You yourself went down there. You took the company Eiffling Plastic, which I brought that up because I mean that's where it all started. It was kind of you know a disc golf story. It was a dream of yours. Bam! Now you're down in Africa. You're running events. Um, what what's the plan for next year? Are you, are we, obviously, this is a yearly thing. Are you in? Are you going to TD again next year with Joel? Yeah, Ross? I mean, uh, do you guys plan on having toilets next year? <laughs> the toilets were actually kind of cool. It's just a little shack out back with about a twenty foot hole in it that you kind of squatted over. But seriously, we yes, we are definitely. I plan to go back every year as often as I can. Well, Obviously, it's a good financial endeavor, and so I have to be able to afford that, and that's going to be some of the fundraising and things that I do. But as long as I can go, I'm going to make it happen, and I'm going to bring as many people as I can with me. Well, speaking of bringing as many people as you can, I know already just from talking to Derek Skull that he and uh, Gatekeeper Media are very, very interested in coming down next year with you guys, so make sure you guys get connected and... Uh, uh, you know, make a plan. That would be that. awesome. Yeah, that'd be that'd be good stuff. No, I, I mean, would have loved to have some great coverage from this first one to tell the whole story that we're doing. It sounds like you could almost do a documentary of disc golf. Uh, you could start there, yeah. and you could just begin to go to these other countries that really haven't even experienced disc golf. Exactly. Teach them the sport. I mean, when you when once you build baskets and you leave baskets somewhere, and a, and a course is created. All of a sudden, now you're building a philosophy, now you're starting a culture, and now you've created the sport in a new country. Absolutely. And well, that was one of the biggest things that I took away from this. Johannes worked so hard to get the Ministry of Education and Sports and the Ministry of Tourism and Culture there and leaders in the um, local community and the local university that believed in him to start this. I made some great connections. I now know the Minister of Tourism, or I'm sorry, the Minister of Culture and Education over in Ethiopia. I've got his phone number in my phone, and I can call him up. That's he so cool. He's so impressed that he wants to integrate disc golf into all the universities of Ethiopia. Wow. You started a movement, man. Yeah. Uh, and, and hopefully next yeah. year, hopefully next year, you guys will actually remember to bring the discs. Yeah. You know, I mean, that John, way... Johnny, if you had to shout out to some people that helped with that event, uh, now's your time. Who, who, would you, who would you like to thank for helping out, make it, making that thing possible? Oh, to make it possible is all the supporters that we had. It's too many to list real quickly here, but we had some great support from all over, and the guys that actually participated in the fact that they made the trip knowing it wasn't going to be a big tournament, knowing it wasn't a major, but they made the trip, they showed up to support their country, support what's going on there, and, and to make it the first step into something great. Yeah. And so, you know, above and beyond Johannes, his father, and his family who took me in while I was there, and 
Nahum James, who is the vice president of the Asosa University for believing in Johannes and authorizing most of this to get done. You know, those are the main characters in the story here, and like I said, I'm just blessed to be a part of that. Well, John, uh, it's really impressive what you've done, man. We are proud of you here in Colorado. I know people around the country have been supporting you, man. It's really awesome. So, John, is there an email, a website? How do people that want to support you get involved yeah. or just find out more information? How, how do they get contact? I would say the best way is through Facebook at iFlynn Plastic. Message me through there or on my personal page. Um, iFlynnPlastic at gmail.com is a great way to get a hold of me. Now, what a and, coincidence. You got Gmail? So do we. The 19th hole yeah. with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. That's there awesome. You go. See, that's a good email to have in your yeah. repertoire also. <laughs> that's awesome. Hey, awesome. one quick question. This was on here. Our writer, Scott Serial, wants to know, what is your favorite beer? I don't have a favorite beer. I actually like nut browns. I like a bunch of different ones. It just it kind of depends upon the weather and my feelings that day. I will say one of the ones that I have that's been most memorable lately was the pistachio nut brown ale. Ooh. That one had a really nice palate to it. Man. Amazing. Gosh, man. I could have guessed that. All right, John, it was awesome, dude. Uh, we appreciate it. Wait a minute. I, Wait, did my, you have another question? I had a question that was, what was the bottom it? of my, all the way at the bottom of mine, too. It's my question said, as a child growing up, John, yes. what was your favorite cartoon show? Marvin the Martian. Oh, man, that That's was a awesome. good one. You got some one. thumbs up in the studio. That was a good one. That's funny. <laughs> you know... I knew we weren't really done with John. I knew we weren't because John actually has some pretty big news. And it, it's again, the, tonight's show is really cool. We had Doug Bierkus uh, drop some cool news with us tonight. Yeah. But John is also going to drop some news on us. John, what do you want to share with us tonight, buddy? Well, I was just asked to have the privilege to have now become the team uh, communication coordinator for Team Millennium. Yes. And Jess have asked me to step up and help them try to get this team coordinated a little bit better, a little better communication going back and forth and relay things and help try to make this team something that people see instead of just a little bit of a background. So I'm behind you all the way, John. The Millennium name and make it a forefront in this community that we call Disc Golf. Hey, I'll tell you what, um, I know we just got a big order in here in the shop, so that's yeah. Fly Green Disc Golf, flygreendiscgolf.com, um, but Fly yeah, flygreendiscgolf.com, um, you know what, uh, I think Millennium needs that, I think they need to make a bigger presence, a better awareness, just the other day Eddie came in here and was saying, you know Mike, that mold is this and that, and I the education I got from it, I shared it with somebody else and they bought a disc and it was like, wow, it's good. so much of it is education, you yes, know, having the proper education, getting yeah, it in front knowledge. of the people oh, and the knowledge, you know, um, in the disc golf stores, the, the, the disc golf people sell what they know. So anyway, yeah. we've got to wrap it up, but um, it was amazing. Well, thank you, thank you so much. It. You're an inspiration for so many people trying to do this in so many other countries and so many other places, yeah. growing this sport across the world, throwing frisbees from one continent to the next to the next. It's just incredible, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate what you're doing. Well, thank you very much. Those words mean a lot to me. That's what keeps me going. And the smiles on those kids' faces as they pick up a disc the first time. Awesome. Johnny, nice. much love, brother. We'll talk to you very soon. Sounds great. Have a great night, guys. Thank you. All Take right, care. guys. And that concludes our show for the evening. Um, I, I want to start out with uh, Eddie's final thought. And uh, my, my thought tonight is that uh, I am damn lucky to be surrounded by such great people. Well, I'll tell you what, Eddie. Um, it's nice to have, have you say that. And you know what? You're a pretty good guy yourself. If you guys think that we're good guys, do us a favor. Watch our YouTube videos, like our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share it with the world. Because if you like it, and he likes it, and I like it, 
everyone else is probably going to like it, right? I'm Mike? I'm getting kind of choked up over I know. here. This, I love doing this show. So give us a like. You can find us on Facebook, too, The 19th Hole with Eddie and Mike. Send us your video clips to The 19th Hole with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com. Make sure you get those videos sent over because we're going to pick some random winners. You might get your video shared. You might get your picture shared. Who knows? We got this picture of our writer, Scott Serio. <laughs> <laughs> Even know it. Don't even say anything about that until it comes out. Awesome. Hey guys, again, thank you. Next week we'll have another special guest on the show. We're going to have an in-house guest. It's going to be awesome. Somebody all the disc offers know. Um, next week we're going to have some specials, some discounts. Uh, we'll talk to you about the, the, the other tag schedules coming up, the tags, the tag discounts. New hot items coming in. Fly Green every single day. Flygreendiscgolf.com. Dot. Come. Don't forget to send us your videos. The 19th hole with Eddie and Mike at gmail.com.